All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen, and we are right on to game two of Rhett vs. Castro in the PokerStrategy.com Team Liquid Star League round of 16. And it does appear that we see LLL Rhett, more commonly known as Rhett, at the, uh, at the bottom in the purple Zerg pieces, and at the top is Castro in the green Zerg pieces. And, you know, I, I will tell you, Chill, when I first saw Rhett's new nickname, I thought it was Lil Rhett. I thought he was, like, developing a career as, like, a rapper. Just letting people know he's a little <laughs> bit of a of a thuggish Dutchman. <laughs> well, that's funny you should mention that because the name he used for a while was Rhett G, J E afterwards, which apparently does mean Little Rhett. So L O L O L to that. Um, and I think <laughs> just bringing it back to the map a little bit, I think Destination is a map where uh, because it's a two-player map and because it's so overplayed. We're going to see really, really tight building placements here. Uh, Sim cities to block Zergling run buys, to block Zergling harassment on your nat on your main. Excuse me, going to be a big deal. So I'm really going to be interested to see. Uh, I'm I'm expecting nothing but perfect building placement from these two players. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is especially one of those maps where you need to have good building placement, or you curse your life if you're spawning at the top position, because it's a little bit harder to do it there. Um, so of course, we know, that's going to be happier to be at the bottom placement. Looks like both players aren't doing anything too extreme. Both players going straight for the Overlord. We see no pools done yet. Both of them are building drones. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a sort of mirror build here. Either both of them taking that 12 hatch risk or both of them doing that 12 pool, right. 12 gas, 12 hatch. Oh, there goes the oh. pool for Castro. And looks like red, no pool. So it looks like red is going to 12 hatch again. This is totally uncharacteristic and I'm very shocked that he would do this two games in a row <laughs> yeah look at this I, I I'm speechless I I saw I guess I'll just talk about something else notice the overlord scouting directions of both players both of them going straight for the expansion not for the main that's super important because you're gonna see zerglings move out first that's the number one thing you're worried about in this matchup, especially when you do some sort of economically focused build like these expansions. So if you send it towards the expansion first, then you can see if the Zerglings are coming and respond appropriately. I think it's a, a, a classic sort of beginner mistake to send it to the, uh, the, the opponent's main first. Right, and that, that's especially key when you're going 12 hatch because... You know, if if you see the Zerglings streaming out, you can get your drones ready to respond. You can kind of prep yourself. When my spawning pool is done, I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring my drones at this time. Whereas if they're already in your natural, it's kind of panic mode. And if you're not used to dealing with that situation, you know, it can, it can end in disaster really quickly. So I, I just to go back to the builds for a second here, I really like Rhett's play because as a lot of these players get high profile, they kind of become very mechanical and, and very transparent. And, of course, I'm thinking of Robo Hydra as the, the prime example here. But what I like about what Rhett's doing is he's really showing that he's not afraid to take a chance. And, I mean, it paid off in Game 1, and he's trying it again very safely here in Game 2. I really like to see this from Zerg players. I'm, I'm interested, though, because you'll note that Castro went for this Zergling speed early. This is a pretty significant window. Rhett is only just now having enough money to begin Zergling speed. And there it is. It goes down in Rhett's main. But look at the front of, of, of Rhett's natural. These Zerglings have a lot of freedom to maneuver around this base. Uh, there's going to be slightly more Zerglings for, um, for Rhett. But, you know, if Castro can control them right and get the speed out, it could be pretty huge. I mean, look at Castro trying to sneak some... Zerglings into the right side of the base. Doesn't look like it's going to get it. Very nice control by Red deflecting that attack. Right, and and killing Zerglings before they get speed. Very key, uh, very key thing here. Castro now running in a few speed Zerglings, and he's trying to sneak two in the side while three are killing drones. Looks like he's got one drone kill there. Red has a lot of Zerglings, but he doesn't have speed. This is a very uncomfortable situation to be in. You really just want to hold this off until you get Zergling speed, and then Castro is going to be put on the defensive foot. We see Red trying to force him back. Uh, if you, if Castro loses access to these two bridges, then he's get, really going to be in a lot of trouble. I'm surprised Red is not going up and uh, trying to control the bridges. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I, I'm a little concerned about Castro's situation. He lost just a few too many Zerglings at the front there. And look at Red just getting so many Zerglings in, pulling all guys out of gas except for one. And look at this, look at this huge circling of push across the double bridge. Oh my god. Oh my god, Castro with some sort of miraculous placement of his Zerglings killed way more than he should have. Jesus. 
Yeah, that's always the incredible thing about Zerg versus Zerg. I, th somehow there's this magical skill where if you set up an arc bigger than your opponent, you kill like 70% more Zerglings than should be mathematically possible. <laughs> but we see Rhett now pushing in, Castro giving up the bridge, but getting a good surround on there, now trying to micro. Uh, he's also got these two Zerglings sneaking around to Rhett's third, but he's given up his natural a little bit. He's going to have to bring drones. I'm surprised he's not fighting with this one drone just to screw up the AI. Now that drone goes down. These two Zerglings at uh, Rhett's third natural still not responding. Looks like he's trying to push back. Rhett has a good arc. Good arc nice here. Arc. Uh, looks like Castro is going to take it down. Beautiful but Red doing a Castro. good job. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, I just incredibly good. And oh, Castro dropping the ball a little bit. Now those two Zerglings at the left are finally entering into Red's main. And Red spots them right off the bat. They're not going to be doing too much, but it's the fact that there are yet more Zerglings coming from the front side. And this game is pretty even despite the early divergence in their builds. And look at this. Look at this nice crunch. The Zerglings get in the main. Jesus, I didn't know they were going to be doing that. And look, more Zerglings from Castro coming down the front. Red's just sort of sacking some drones in his main. One drone in the main falls. More Zerglings from the front. How did Castro break the front? Dude, Red is just losing stuff all over the place. This is icky. <laughs> Yeah, I'm surprised because usually in ZBZ, in the 12 hatch against 12 pool situation, there's uh, this timing where you make um, you make Mutilus, and at that time Zerglings are really strong, but Rhett didn't even do that. He's been making pure pure Zerglings, and Castro's just cutting him apart with straight tactics. Running those two Zerglings and Rhett not being able to deal with the multitask. Now these five Zerglings are going to run in while these six pincer from the back. Really nice play from Castro, and Rhett is in a world of trouble here. Oh my god, he has one Mutalisk almost out, but I think he's just going to have to give up his main. Or, let me try it again. Give up his expansion and just stick straight with his main. I mean, one Mutalisk is out, but there's just too many Zerglings coming out right now. And when you have that small of an air count, you do exactly what Castro's doing. You keep throwing Zerglings in and just get a handful of Scourge every now and again and just rely on those to whittle the Mutalisk numbers down as you let your Zerglings do the work. And look at this, these two Scourge coming in. There is no way Rhett's going to be able to micro this properly, especially with all those Zerglings in the main. Rhett gives it a shot, but it loses one Mutalisk. And this looks like game two is just going every way possible into Castro's favor. Yeah, this this actually looks like a little bit of a repeat of game one again here. Zerglings running in again, harassing the drones. Uh, Rhett again forced to divide his attention between his main and his natural as Zerglings stream in. Castro is Castro is actually uh, getting Mutalus this time, so he's not going to make a repeat of the first game. A lot of drones going down, only two drones left, one drone left. Looks like Red is making Zerglings and Mutalus. All the drones dead, so Red now repeating game one. Natural going to go down, and Red says, screw it, I'm going to kill some drones, flying all his <laughs> Mutalus out towards Castro's, ma Castro's main. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be pretty much impossible for Red to win in this situation, so he's just going to go ahead and send his Mutalisk to the top, kill off some drones for a moral victory. Um, but, I mean, you know, it's really impressive play by Castro. Look at this, Castro already having the Mutalisk as natural, not even giving Red, you know, a, a drone here or there. I mean, just complete domination, perfect defense at this stage, and the Zerglings killing the Extractor, remembering what happened in Game 1, not going to let that one happen again and only two more structures left for Rhett. We might just see Rhett get eliminated. He's trying to do some fancy Mutalist Micro up here at the top, but is just not going to cut it. At zero food, Rhett is going to leave game two. So we are tied up 1-1. One, one. Wow. Very, very nice game again there. And, you know, for people who say ZVZ is a coin flip, take notes because that was not well if you want to say it was a coin flip Castro lost the coin flip then somehow took the coin and jammed it down Rhett's throat taking game two very <laughs> convincingly yeah I mean uh, that was it's kind of funny because there are so many people going man what would have happened if this had gone this way in game one and the answer is we'll just you know watch game two I mean <laughs> in, in that game Castro didn't make that extra sunken colony for defense he continued to pound his opponent apart with Zerglings as aggressively as he could. And it was really impressive to see Castro's arcs with his Zerglings. Everything should have indicated that Rhett was in the lead, but, um, I mean, Castro was so good at positioning his Zerglings in these beautiful arcs. You know, it was ten Zerglings hitting seven, ten Zerglings hitting six. And there was very little that Rhett could, uh, you know do if he continued to push forward with those zergling groups but it's really easy when you're that far of a lead when you have huge numbers of zerglings advantage over your opponent just to attack and say yeah he has a concave but i'll break it anyways and i think that's a little bit of a mistake that Rhett did right there when he's moving across his double bridge at the start of the game 
Yeah, so true, so true. And people think, you know, they're all melee units, so so the arc positioning doesn't matter. But if you have experience in those Zerg versus Zerg battles, so, I, I know I just said it before, but somehow you always come out ahead when you shouldn't, when it should be mathematically impossible. And Castro in both games has won, you know, the decisive Zergling battle. And even when Rhett was in his natural, he still took his time, grouped up, formed that arc, and Rhett kind of funneled into it. Castro took him down. Very nice play by Castro thus far. Rhett doing well, but, Rhett, you know, Rhett's getting the advantage with the build order. Castro's kind of taking it back with mechanics and tactics. So I'm really impressed with Castro thus far. Uh, I've never seen him play ZVZ at this level, and it's been very nice to watch so far. So 1-1, one, one, we're going to go on to game three. Let's go ahead and throw that up there. We're going to be looking at Outsider. Outsider is definitely an interesting map in all the matchups, and Zerg Zerg is no exception. I mean, it might seem normal initially because you have a main, and then there's your natural expansion, which has gas, and, you know, that's all fine and normal. Um, the big issue is when your games start to get over the 12, you know, over the 13, 14 minute mark, when those outside ring double gas expansions become a real important component of the game, because a lot of early expansions, uh, or just any early expand type play, is going to have the advantage of getting the extra bit of minerals that allows you to place extra hatches and, you know, cute locations to build extra spore colonies to defend how spread out you are. So even though there's three starting positions, which allows for a nice, dynamic, aggressive opening, I wouldn't be surprised to see both players opt for something a little bit more safe, a little bit more expansion-oriented, because honestly, I want to see a long Zerg versus Zerg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I think you said it very well. Not much more to say here. This has been a great ZVZ thus far. Quick games, but tactically very high levels. And I'm very excited to see what's going to happen. Let's get right into it. Let's get into game three.